Welcome to Connect to Joy. Your host, Carol DeShane, is an intuitive spiritual guide for practical matters and Marconic multidimensional energy practitioner. Her quest is to help you realize new possibilities, discover and release what holds you back, and enable you to manifest an inspired life filled with joy. Join us on this journey of transformation. Now, here's your host, Carol DeShane. Welcome, beautiful spirits. Thank you for joining me here today. I'm Carol DeShane, and my passion in life is to help you find your joy, to release what holds you back, and assist you to quantum leap your journey of self-discovery. I'm an intuitive, certified in life and business coaching, and a Marconic multidimensional energy practitioner and teacher. So if you're ready to start creating that life you've only dreamed of, that you deserve, let's have some fun. And let's get started right now. Hello and welcome. Most people want to know what they're supposed to do or be when they grow up. And everyone who considers themselves spiritual usually wants to know what their life purpose is supposed to be. And then they want to know how they can stay on that path and how they know when they're off the path. I already have a show on finding your life purpose and how to monetize it if that's what you want. So this one's a little different. Let's say you're living your life purpose or that you aren't worried about the specifics and just want to know that you're doing what you came to this planet to do. Today is about staying on that path and how you go about doing it. There are lots of different ways to do it, but I'm going to give you what I think of as the four most straightforward and uncomplicated ways to go about doing it. I did not say easy or simple. I said straightforward and uncomplicated. Easy to remember. Before we get into that, let me ask you, where are you on your path? Do you know your purpose? Are you stepping into it and feel good? Or maybe you know your purpose, but you're not sure if you're actually staying on purpose. That path may feel a little convoluted, and maybe you feel like you're not quite going the straight path. Maybe you're taking a lot of detours. Notice I have no judgment on any of this, just to say, where are you right now? Are you happy? Do you feel contented or at peace? Or maybe you just feel confused and you do not have a clue what your purpose is. Now, if you don't care what your purpose is, that's a different way of looking at it. It's just to say, I want to do what I'm here to do. What path am I supposed to take? How am I supposed to feel good about being on this planet? Some people have given up on figuring out the purpose because it seems so hard. So they just want to know why they're here to the extent of what can I do to make me feel like I'm making a difference? In any of the above, you're in the right place. Because if you're wanting to stay on point, on your path, then this is how you can figure out if you're still on it or if you've diverted yourself a little bit in a different direction than what you maybe want. So the first straightforward and uncomplicated way to find out if you're on your path is to listen to your body. What does that mean? Well, your body will be unhappy and not in a particularly good place if you are off your path. It won't feel good. Maybe it feels exhausted because you don't get enough energy to do anything. It doesn't mean you need more sleep. It just means it feels like maybe you do need more or that you're simply sitting in front of the TV with no oomph to do anything. And all of us have had those sort of days, but hopefully not all the time. It doesn't mean that your body has to be the perfect size or shape. I'm not saying anything about that. But if your body's yelling at you because you have a disease of some sort, like diabetes or something, and losing weight would be good for you, then maybe it's yelling at you by giving you a disease. It's saying, hey, over there, pay attention to me. You're ignoring me. Why need this thing? I can't help you on your path until I'm happy. So the body needs to be at rest and at peace before your spiritual path will feel like you're in alignment. Because it's hard to feel an alignment 
when you're unhealthy. Sometimes, and all the time really, it can help us to stay on the path. Normally, if we're already on our path and we get sick and we're in good spiritual alignment, it doesn't detract that much, but we do learn from those times. But you might find that not only perhaps you're sick, perhaps you're not, maybe your body's craving certain foods that aren't particularly good for it. And you're going, why do I want sugar? Why do I want this? So maybe you need to look into that. I know that my sister at one point was craving peanut butter, but she got like no protein. And that was what her body was saying. Hello, I need some energy. Give me some protein. And so it wanted peanut butter. So do you feed your body right for you? Because each body is different. You can't say everybody should be a vegetarian or everybody should eat beef. You should do what feels right for your body and what keeps you at the right weight for where you want to be and what makes you feel good. Then you have to look at your body and listen and say, do you have pain? If you have pain, it's the body's way of saying, hello out there, I have a problem. Will you please pay attention? When you pay attention to pain, you can find out how to help yourself, how to help your body, how to get back into alignment again. Maybe your body needs exercise. It's saying, hello, get up off the couch, run around, jump up and down, dance. That's my body. It goes, hello, stop sitting down. I know you're on your computer again, but get up and jump up and down. Do something for me. You may need more air or sun. You may need to get outside, do some walking, be in the fresh sunlight if there is anywhere you're at. Be in that air that is good for you. Try different things to see what your body likes. So the number one thing you can do is listen to your body. The second straightforward and uncomplicated way to find out if you're on your path is to listen to your mind. Now see how simple these are? So listen to your mind. What's it saying? What's it doing? My mind is an incredibly fast talker. It does a lot of chattering And I kind of wonder what it wants sometimes. It's going, why are you talking so fast at me? The ideas come so quick. And most people, I think, have a fairly active mind. It doesn't just simply be quiet and shut up. It's pretty active. So if you're busy and you're fast talking or you're fast thinking, it's hard to listen to your mind because it's between those breaths that you can hear the mind can calm. You may have a lot of chatter, a lot of voices in your head. Like I said, fast talking. That inner monologue goes really in circles sometimes. And they may be negative. It may be positive. A lot of times though, it is negative voices. So make sure you try to stay in the present moment and figure out what in the world your mind is trying to tell you. Because if you don't stay in the present moment, your mind will speed off to another direction. Future, past, it's all over the place. So you need to pay particular attention to what it's saying. Positive is great. You don't need to worry about the positive thoughts. But the negative thoughts, where do those come from? Do they come from your parents, your siblings, your teachers, the bully in elementary school maybe? Listen to what it's saying and see where it comes from. A lot of times it's just your subconscious mind saying, hey, be careful, Up, oh, watch out. So it's telling you there's a safety issue and you should be cautious. And if you just say, thank you, I hear you, I appreciate you, I'm going to do what I want to do now, but I do hear you. Then a lot of times that fear, that little tiny voice will stop talking. Except once in a while I go, oh, be careful. It's like, okay, I got it. Thank you. So pay attention to those negative voices and acknowledge them and say, I hear you. I understand. Thank you for telling me those things. But sometimes, like I said, where those voices come from, you can get rid of them totally if you recognize it. I know my dad very much had an issue with money and lack thereof. He always worried that we didn't have enough. And because of that, I had that little voice in my head that said, oh, you won't have enough. Don't spend too much. Oh, 
no, you got to save everything. And saving is great. But the fear of lack is not the reason necessarily to do the savings. I knew where that voice came from and that helped me immensely in releasing some of that fear. You also need to still your mind to a certain extent because you need to be able to hear when ideas come to you, to pay attention, to go, oh, I got it. So when ideas come up, do you even hear them? New possibilities arise, new opportunities that your mind goes, ooh, ah, I got it. Oh, what about this? What about that? And those ideas can only come to you if you're listening to your mind and paying attention instead of letting it rattle on where you, you know how those people that you don't care for much, you're thinking about other things when they're talking. It's almost like you do that with your own mind. Your mind goes off in a million directions and you're just like the bystander going, yeah, mom for the ride. Would you, are you shut up now? I'm, I'm tired of listening to myself think. That can happen. Pay attention, be in the present moment, and see what happens. Those new ideas that maybe you squashed or didn't listen to in the past, you might have heard them 20 times. Your mind might have come up with them, but maybe you just didn't occur to you to pay attention or to act on them. And all of a sudden you go, oh, this is an idea. This is something I need to listen to. This is good. And of course, you can quiet your mind with meditation so that you can calm it down and allow it to be clearer and be less quick chatter to yourself. The third straightforward and uncomplicated way to find out if you're on your path, and I know we're on a roll here, you're going to kind of go, well, yeah, that sounds right. Listen to your emotions. Listen to your emotions and tune into them to see how they are ruling you. And if they are, what is your normal emotion? The one that you usually have. Most people have kind of a normal that they're at. So are you normally a happy person, a calm person? What adjectives would you use for yourself? Are you usually an angry person, a worried person? What are you? Your path will bring you peace. It'll bring you joy contentment, or a sense of knowingness. But if you're more negative than positive and you stay stuck there, you probably aren't on your path. Depression, sadness, anxiety, if those are overwhelming or you're stuck there, then see a doctor. Have some tests done to see if there's any kind of an imbalance in your system because that's always the easiest place to start. And then if you need help, by all means, get help. Get a therapist or a psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever it is you feel you need to work your way through it if you're stuck in those bad feelings. You aren't on your path if you're always upset or unhappy. So check in and see what brings you joy or peace and then do some of those things. They'll help readjust your emotions, kind of like rebalance them so that then you can start on your path again and continue on down the road. Once you calm your emotions from the ones that pull you down, if you can do it without medication, that's perfect. But if you can't, that's all right. It will be easier to tap into your emotions to find out how connected you are to your path if you can quiet your mind and then allow it to give you that information that you need rather than a big blob of information all at once. The fourth straightforward and uncomplicated way to find out if you're on your path is, of course, to listen to your spirit. You can't listen if you don't quiet your body, your mind, and your emotions because that is the hardest thing to connect to or the easiest depending on where you're at. If there's too much chatter going on in the rest of your being, It's kind of hard to connect because they're distracting you and they become more of a priority if they're not on board. If you can connect through meditation, you don't have to just sit there and go om. You don't have to just quiet your mind that way. You could do it by gardening, by walking or walking your dog, by 
jogging or just being out in nature and sitting there and breathing, even by taking the dishes out of the dishwasher, anything that's a repetitive task, if you breathe into it and allow your mind to calm, that can be your form of meditation. I have noticed when I was, well, about 20 years ago, when I was praying, I would get all my emotions out and I'd ask and ask and ask. But the meditation was a listening time. So if you have too much chatter in your mind, maybe pray first. Ask God. Ask Him for direction. Ask Him to have answers. Help, 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 help. Oh my God, cry, carry on. Whatever you need to do. I've been there. I totally get it. And then take a breath and follow it up with a meditation, especially if you can do a bubble bath. It works great. I did fire and water, so I would have the fire of the candles during the prayer and extinguish them, and then I would do the meditation while I was still in the bathtub with my eyes shut. Because then, in the meditation, that's when I could listen. Prayer for asking, meditation for listening. And it felt like I got clearer answers when I did it that way. And many people think that you don't get answers when you're praying. Let me say, please, please, please don't stop listening for an answer after you're done praying. Don't expect all your answers to come during a prayer. They simply don't most of the time, like 99% of the time in my estimation, when for me personally and my clients. When you're praying or meditating and you're asking for help, and you want a clear answer, put it out there to the universe and say specifically what you want. I need an answer to this. Please help me find it. But don't give up and say, oh, I'm done meditating. I can't sit here anymore. I don't have an answer. You don't have an answer yet. Because you will get one. You will know what you want afterwards if you're paying attention. Answers come from all different directions, from all different people, and even from advertisements on TV sometimes. You get the answers you need. You just have to pay attention. And it will tell you if you're off path, what's going on. You'll find answers. And then you'll find why you're off path, where you're off path, and how to reconnect to it, if that is indeed what you're asking for. Now also, when you're asking and you're listening to your spirit, Intuition is maybe what you think you're getting, but intuition is spirit breaking through your consciousness going, hello, hello, pay attention. And the other thing that's there is this inner knowingness. The higher you raise your vibration, the more clairvoyance changes to knowingness. So you just know an answer to something. You may not know why, but you'll know something is true for you, you'll know a direction to take. So when you're asking yourself, should I go right or left? Don't ask the question that way. Ash, is going right the best for me? Is going left the best for me? And see what it feels like. Because you can get an answer. And I even have asked for yes and no answers to figure out how, what kind of answer I should be getting here. It's like, well, Is this a yes or is this a no? And you can learn how to do that for yourself. Sometimes they're clearer than other times, but that's something else you can do. So how do you know if you're on the life path you're supposed to be on? Or if you're still on the path you started out on? Ask your body. Ask your mind. Ask your emotions. And ask your spirit. If any one of those is out of alignment, then the path might be slightly off. If you listen to them, they may be shouting at you that you're off your path. But if you don't listen, you'll never realize it. And if you're off your path, ask for guidance to shift yourself back onto it. And then, like I said, listen and pay attention because the universe will give you answers in one form or another. You can even ask the universe to give you two or three validations that you're on the right path so you know it's true. I've done that many times where I've asked for validation 
Am I on the right path? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Tell me. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, something from somewhere, I'll get a validation. I know when I was going to move and I didn't know which state and I had it down to three, I said, okay, I need to know which three. I want to decide next week. I'm going to give myself some time to come up with an answer and see what happens. Literally, I had three validations on that one. And the third time I went, okay, I hear you. Thank you. Because where I was supposed to move to was Colorado and people were coming out of the woodwork talking about Colorado. And I didn't even tell them I was thinking of moving because I wasn't really much into social media then, just a little Facebook, but I didn't put it out there. And the people I was around and the ones that were mentioning it, I didn't mention it to any of those people that got a response and talked suddenly about Colorado. Great place to live. Ooh, you know, if you move there, you're going to do this and do that. And I'm going, did I say anything to this person? I don't think I did. There was even something on TV that came on that was a documentary about a section of Colorado or something that happened there. And I went, okay, I got it. This is where I'm supposed to be. And that shifted my life and got me on a different path. Being on your path will bring you a sense of deep inner peace. It will bring you joy and a feeling that you're where you should be. Anything less may take a bit of a course correction. And to get your course correction, again, ask and get that connection so that you can figure out how far off you are. And maybe even the path needs to be shifted slightly because sometimes life changes. And instead of being on the path we started on, it seems to be off the beaten path where we want to be and maybe a detour. And then we realize that actually is the road that we've shifted to and it's the right place to be. So just because you feel a little off your path doesn't mean you aren't where you're supposed to be. Maybe the lesson that you're learning when you're in that detour is huge. It's something you needed, something you're on the planet for. So never beat yourself up and never worry that you're not where you should be. Because ultimately, there is no wrong place. There are just lessons and things that you can do for yourself, which will help other people as well. Thank you for listening to Connect to Joy. If you love the show, make sure you rate, review, and share this podcast. And subscribe so you never miss an episode. Contact the host, Carol DeShane, with questions and comments, ideas for future episodes, or if you would like to become a guest. And remember, transformation is a journey and not an end destination. So be kind to yourself, because you are already enough to have the joyful, limitless life that you desire.